Welcome to trash can tips. When buying a trash can, be sure to buy the chrome option because we all know things are better in chrome, even garbage cans. And speaking of garbage cans, you can throw that joke in it because seriously, wheels, like that hasn't been done to death at this point. This is not about a trash can. This is about the Mac Pro, which happens to be a beautiful and stylish trash can. <laughs> So this video is going to have a slightly different angle than probably most Mac Pro reviews. This Mac Pro is around $3,100, and on my channel, the Linus Tech Tips channel, recently, we did a Hackintosh build out of off-the-shelf PC parts that we spent about $3,600, $3,700 on. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take that Hackintosh, we're going to pull half the RAM out of it, because I went and put 64 gigs of RAM in it, making it much more equivalent to this one in terms of pricing, then we are going to take these two machines, one of which runs OS X and doesn't have Thunderbolt and is larger but does have PCI Express expansion and can overclock, and we're going to put it up against the Mac Pro, which does have Thunderbolt expansion, and you know what, why don't we just start by giving you guys a, a solid rundown of the Mac Pro. On the outside of the machine, we've got an optical enabled 3.5mm line out audio jack. We've also got a four pole headphone slash microphone jack. We've got four USB USB 3 ports, 6 Thunderbolt 2.0 ports that can be used as either connectivity for external devices or mini display port for displays. We've got dual gigabit ethernet and also internally there's hidden AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0. There's also a hidden speaker in there somewhere. One other thing, like it, like it glows. If you actually, if you tilt the machine, there's a, there's a sensor that actually illuminates the ports, which is really, really cool. Now, if we open this baby up, we can get a look at the internals. This particular one is a 3.7 gigahertz quad core that boosts up to 3.9 gigahertz. That is a Xeon processor, not a Core i7. It's got dual AMD Fire Pro D300s, each with two gigs of GDDR5 memory, and it's got 12 gigs of RAM on these sleds that pop out. You should notice that, note that three of them are filled. It should also be noted that this is ECC memory, and and you can add more, but you can't, you know, mix and match buffered and unbuffered memory and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to upgrade this system, you're going to have to be really careful with your memory selection. Make sure it correctly matches up with what you have in here. It's got a 256 gig PCI Express SSD, which appears to be an M2 uh, SSD with a custom metal shroud. It looks like with a Torx bit, you should be able to get that off and you can replace it with your own. Just note, guys, that OS X doesn't enable trim at this time on aftermarket. SSDs. Now, something that I've wanted to test for quite a while is the thermal performance and noise. So in order to have a quick look at this, I mean, yeah, it's not the most scientific testing ever. We ramp the CPU up with a looping command line trick and the GPUs with two instances of Unigen Valley at Extreme HD settings, and these are our results. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, it's time to bring in the Hackintosh and have a look at how the performance compares benchmark-wise. First, we'll give you a rundown of what exactly makes it up. So here is the Hackintosh that I created for a Linus Tech Tips video project inside an NCX TH440. We've got a 4930K overclocked in there, 64 gigs of RAM, an X79 UP4, an AX860i power supply from Corsair, an NHU12S cooler along with some NFF12s for the rest of the system cooling. We've also got a GTX 780 reference card, an 840 EVO 500 gig SSD. <gasps> I guess that's pretty much it. So let's see how well it performs compared to an actual Mac Pro. We ran both systems with the same stress test, so the CPUs were loaded with a looping command line trick and the GPUs with instances of Unigen Valley at extreme HD settings, and surprisingly, that triangular unified thermal core did its job pretty well. The GPUs hit 65 degrees Celsius and the CPU hit 57. Pretty darn good. Idling was a bit hotter than 45 degrees each. This probably has to do more with the fan speed being barely noticeably different between idle and full on than anything else. The Hackintosh's thermal performance was pretty decent as well. The GPU hit 80 degrees while the CPU hit 61.5. So yeah, this one's cooler, but you know, maybe, there you go. The difference between each is noticeable, but they take very different approaches to the way it's cooled. So this one does get a little bit louder than the Mac Pro. That's just the, the fact of the matter. The Mac Pro was amazingly silent at full load, and it was measured by wheels at about 48 decibels with an idle 
acoustic measurement of 37.6 decibels right at the exhaust compared to the Hackintosh which was around 62 decibels at the rear of the case and 55 at idle. However, it should be noted and I told wheels this now but not before that I don't have any of the noise reducers on the Noctua fans. So yeah, it's louder than it really has to be. For the Mac Pro, this noise reduction did come at a steep price though. The Valley Extreme HD score was a disappointing 998 on a single GPU with FPS averaging around 23.8. Crossfire isn't supported at this time for Valley and OS 10, but even with perfect 2x scaling, which never happens, um, we've seen GTX 590s hit that mark. So our Hackintosh, on the other hand, scored 2032 with an average frame rate of 48.6. So it boils down to this. The Mac Pro is nice and extremely compact. It's a very sexy piece of hardware. It's also priced at over $3,000 pretty pricey compared to the Hackintosh with which you're getting significantly more powerful hardware and much better performance. You're also getting something that's not fully serviceable, however it should be noted that the stuff that you're going to be tinkering with is about as serviceable as a laptop. So things like RAM and hard drive, well SSD, are the most commonly swapped parts and those are easily replaceable. So what you're getting for your money is that elegant design, the very small form factor, and of course the decently powerful hardware in the form of a quad-core CPU and dual GPUs. You're we're also getting workstation grade hardware, which is something that we can't ignore. This is consumer grade hardware, and the Mac Pro is workstation grade hardware. So even though those GPUs aren't as powerful in the benchmark like heaven, they're going to be using workstation grade componentry such as the RAM, and are therefore inherently more reliable. But then the flip side of that argument is, well, if my graphics card dies, I'll throw another newer, more powerful one in anyway, because I spent so much less on it in the first place. So so it goes both ways. The other thing you're getting with the Mac Pro is Thunderbolt 2. Six of those ports, which if you're big into Thunderbolt expansion is going to be a big deal because right now X79 Hackintoshes have no support for Thunderbolt whatsoever. So big thanks to iGalleria for loaning the Mac Pro to NCIX for this episode. This unit's going to be going on display there, so go check it out. More info in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Comment below and tell us your Hackintosh stories. We'd love to hear them. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com.